Uh, and we're recording, so it says. So welcome everybody. This is uh, day two of our daily somatics uh, exploration and I'm really happy to see you here. So, uh, I'll start with a very brief, hopefully very brief, reminder of some of the basics because I think that's always helpful, helpful for me. So that's why I, that's why I do it. It's helpful for me to have these reminders. So I, I hope that it's helpful for you as well. So the intention, my intention with the somatic exploration that we're going to do together is that it is gentle and helpful. And that's pretty much diametrically opposed to almost everything else that I've ever done in my life. Uh, if you're anything like me, then it's very much different from most things you've done in your life. And so it takes, for me at least, it takes a lot of uh, intention and willingness to soften and to really receive the possibility rather than to strive, tense up, try, and all of the strategies that I've accumulated over this lifetime trying to get something or fix something or figure something out or win or succeed, all of the things that I think I have to do in order to be okay, but that really have just generated misery in my life. And so this, I use the word a lot, but it's really appropriate. It's radically different. So radical meaning really going to the root. It really is radically different. So really, I invite you to let that in as we explore. And hopefully I'll remember to give this reminder also as we're exploring together. But I'll, I'll mention it now because it's so helpful to me. <laughs> and hopefully it will be helpful to you. And it's this. The interpretation that I have of the sensations that occur has proven to be mistaken consistently. So when I really recognize that, when I really receive the truth of that in the moment, then I'm free to receive the truth of the experience rather than my habitual conditioned reaction to the experience, to the sensation. And this makes a huge difference. This is, this is for me, this is the difference between suffering and peace. So it's a to me, it's a really big deal. When I believe which I'm conditioned to do. So it's happening automatically, unless I'm aware of it, unless I'm consciously aware of it. Uh, when I accept that my conditioned beliefs and reactions are true, I will suffer. That's my experience. That's what I find. When I rest and observe the truth of the experience, rather than overlaying my conditioned reaction, I discover freedom. So that's, for me, it's night and day. It's a huge, huge, huge difference. So I'm, um, hopefully that will, hopefully that's somewhat clear to you. And if it's not entirely clear, which of course it won't be entirely clear because it's not never entirely clear, but uh, hopefully that points you in a good direction. And then uh, hopefully I'll remember to remind you in useful ways as we explore together. So uh, we'll start by sitting if that's comfortable and appropriate for you, I will be sitting. And I invite you to modify the guidance that I offer in ways that are appropriate for you. 
because you should never struggle or strain during these explorations. Let it be gentle, let it be light. And uh, so if you need to lie down, that's okay. If you need to stand because that's more appropriate for you, that's fine. If you are sitting uh, and it's possible to do without strain or stress, then I encourage you to sit uh, without leaning back against something, if that's possible. For most of us, that's really hard. For most of us, that's really hard. And, and part of the exploration that we're doing together is to be curious about why is that? Isn't that strange that it would be hard to sit upright, that we would strain to do this most basic thing? Uh, and I find that very interesting. So that's part of the exploration is just to be curious about that and to be open to the possibility that it doesn't have to be that way. And that possibly I or you in, in your case, but I'll, I'll put it in first person, possibly I am doing something that's making it uncomfortable. That, that it's not inherently uncomfortable, but I am doing something. And so the, in, the exploration is to discover what that is. So we'll see, we'll, we're in our starting position now. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to put my feet in a little bit more comfortable position for me. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to close my eyes because I find that helpful. I noticed yesterday, when I, I rewatched a little bit of the video. I, it looked like I, from my perspective, it looked like, so from the perspective of, of video, watching the video, it looked like I was surprised to see the way that I, I appeared. So that's always interesting. Uh, and I think it helps to have the eyes closed because I, then I, I notice I'm really tuning into the somatic experience, not the visual cues that I've relied upon to tell me where I am in space and whether I'm upright or not. So if it's comfortable for you, I invite you to close your eyes. If it's not comfortable for you, then don't do that. So you, you need, you are responsible for your well-being. I'm responsible for my well-being. Take the suggestions that I offer as suggestions and see if they're helpful to you. But never do anything that feels dangerous or unsafe or, or risky for you. So what I would really like to start with today is to explore how uh, awareness of the breath can be very, very powerful technique for cultivating somatic awareness. So for most of us, well, let's just start by just noticing the breath for, for a moment. I'll just maybe shut up for <laughs> a moment and just tune in to your breath. Don't try to modify it, just notice it for a moment. Just notice the, the breath as, as it occurs. So next, I'd like you to start to notice, does the breath feel satisfying? Do you, do you notice any desire or habit, perhaps, of wanting to control the breath? because perhaps you have a sense that it's not fully satisfying. Maybe you notice a habit of, of a, a, these are just possibilities of what you might notice. You might not notice these specifically, but you might notice a tendency to, uh, toward erratic breathing, where it's not smooth and even, and so therefore sometimes there's an impulse to draw in a deeper breath, a bigger breath, 
a more expansive breath. You might also notice where does the breath feel satisfying in the way that it moves your body, right? So if we sit here still, just allowing for the floor or the chair or the bed or the couch or whatever it is that we're on to support us, if I allow, in my case, I'm sitting on the floor, so if I just allow the floor to support me so I can let go in the buttocks, let go in the lower back, let go in the lower abdomen. And of course that is always gonna be relative because it depends upon how much awareness I have of how much I'm holding on. But if I allow that release so that I'm supported here to the best of my ability to receive that support, then I might notice this stillness in the body And it can get to a point where the whole body is very still, very aligned, very much at ease. And yet the breath is moving. So this breath is moving and it's moving inside the body. So I might then be curious and you might be curious to notice where is the breath moving in a in an easeful way, if that's a good word, easy, easy, maybe it's a bit. Where, do, where does the breath move easily without any strain, without any effort to draw in a bigger breath or a deeper breath or to direct the breath or control the breath? Where does the breath just move very satisfyingly and easily? And then where do I notice restriction? Where do I notice that the breath doesn't seem to want to move or it does, it wants to move, but I don't know how to allow it there. Now I notice Right away, I noticed personally that the, it's, it, for me, it feels like the breath really would like to move more easily into the lower abdomen. So I notice a restriction there. I notice there's some tension, some holding back, some holding in, whatever I want to call it. There's a an unsatisfying sensation, an unclear sensation. And I notice that that sensation is a sensation that I am in the habit of, uh, of, of fighting or struggling with. Now I haven't really conceived of it in that way because I've been largely unconscious of it, but now I notice that I, I'm in the habit of trying to overcome that restriction by the use of greater effort. So I try to use effort to draw the breath deeper into the lower abdomen. It's my habit. But here, what I want to do and what I'm inviting you to do is to see, is it possible to discover how it is that I am making too much effort, where I'm straining too much to hold something, contain something, restrict something, limit something, protect something. And in this case, I'm talking about the lower abdomen. Now, when I invite you to explore the lower abdomen as I am now, of course, you may have this totally free, open lower abdomen of total clarity of sensation might be just absolutely pleasurable, in which case, why not explore it? Because that sounds really nice. Uh, but it's also possible, uh, you know, maybe you just don't find it to be a fruitful exploration. So that's okay. You, you get to be free to explore as you wish. So maybe you notice a restriction somewhere else. That's fine. Explore that. And you can explore it with the same, we'll call them principles maybe. So it's really just to notice where there's a restriction, allow the breath to move naturally without strain. 
So this is really, like I said earlier on, this is radical. You know, what would life be like? Just imagine the possibility of life without strain, where the breath is satisfying and natural and effortless. And being breathed. Wouldn't that be interesting? I, I, that sounds really exciting to me. <laughs> and here, here I am face to face with this possibility. I mean, it, it, this is the possibility here and now of really opening to that. It's not some future thing. It's actually here and now, this possibility. I'm, I'm actually face to face with what it is that restricts that free, easy, effortless, pleasurable movement of the natural breath. And who's doing that? Well, me. Isn't that true? I'm not maybe yet aware entirely of how it is that I do that, but clearly it's me who's doing that. It's clearly me who's clenching. So that's good news. So this breath, we're just allowing the breath to be effortless. Now you might notice any number of things, but I think one likely possibility is you might notice that the breath becomes gentler. Now, if you are in the habit, as many of us are, of over breathing, forcing the breath, strenuous breathing, at first, this reduced breath may possibly provoke some strong sensations, some emotions. So be very gentle. Don't try to reduce the breath, okay? That's not the goal, to reduce the breath. But you may just notice that the breath becomes gentler. There, there's a reduction in the volume because you're not straining. If that happens, just notice that. If it doesn't happen, that's fine. But just allow the breath to become more and more effortless. And see if maybe the breath is like, like, the, like a gentle rising and falling of the tide. And you can feel that gentle rising and falling of the tide, just gently pressing against the hardness, the limitation, the fear, the anxiety, the impatience, the frustration of, of the habits, the conditioning in the body mind. So I find I'm going to look at the time, just make sure. Okay. <laughs> Obviously I find, I find this exploration to be very delightful because I've been guiding us in it for quite a while now. I hope that you also find this to be helpful. But I also want to be respectful of the fact that I think for many of us to be so still can be challenging. So I don't want to push any of us or uh, encourage any kind of strain. So please remember that you, you get to be in, you get to be responsible for your well being. So just look, be very gentle. Don't strain. I had some other things in mind for today. I'm wondering if we're going to do them. (laughs) 
I want to I want to say a few other th things, some observations that I think might be helpful. So as we're sitting here, even though I've been doing a lot of talking, which kind of introduces some challenges to the somatic inquiry, uh, I I notice that just this light awareness of the breath moving the lower abdomen has produced a softness in my lower abdomen and I can notice that my whole my center of gravity seems to have shifted lower I feel more more before I felt more like an apple and now I feel more like a pear more stable that softness and uh, suppleness in the lower abdomen that allows for a greater rootedness or groundedness so that I can really receive that support from under me. So I'm not straining, trying to lift myself up. Rather, I'm noticing that the support is already, it's already built in. I don't have to strain to lift myself up. I can allow myself to be supported by the structure that's already here. It's just allowing everything to just be gently stacked up, aligned, resting. And I can start to notice that traveling all the way up the spine and the, the torso. I notice it that the, my lower back is softer. The chest is softer. But I still notice some squeezing and tensing in the face. So I'm pointing these things out, not to say, look at me, isn't that great? And you should have the same experience, but just to invite you also to notice what's happening throughout the body. And whatever you notice, maybe you might notice judgment. Maybe you might notice frustration. Maybe you might notice impatience. Maybe you might notice numbness. Maybe you might notice worry. Whatever you notice, just uh, my invitation to you is to discover what is actually happening. Is it actually what I think it is? Or is it actually something different? Something maybe that would be better described just as habit, a habit of tension, a habit of contraction, a habit of numbness, a habit of Of, of limitation, of, of self-protection. And maybe, maybe what we can notice together is that, as I said earlier, who's doing this? Is this being done to me? Or is it, if I really look, might I discover that I'm doing it? Yeah, let's wrap up with, with something that's a little bit more active. Okay, so if it's still comfortable for you to do this sitting, then I, will, I invite you to do it while sitting because I think it will be nice to do while sitting. But if you are not comfortable sitting, then please remember that you don't need to sit. So I, as I just mentioned, I noticed some tension in my face. Now, I often notice tension in my face, contraction around the eyes and the cheeks and in the jaw, forehead. Now, what we've been doing, you might notice 
uh, that we weren't moving the body. We were allowing the movement to occur through the breath. But that movement of the breath offers some contrast of sensation. That contrast of sensation is very helpful, I find. It's extremely helpful in highlighting what it is that I'm doing. Without that contrast, I'm going to have a harder time noticing what it is that I'm doing so that I can then discover how to soften. With the face, of course, we could allow the breath to do the movement of the face too. In general, though, I find that the movement of the breath works best uh, in when the focus is more in the torso, so in the abdomen and chest, because the breath tends to move more in those areas more easily. So if I'm noticing tension in the face, then it's nice to consciously move the face to provide that contrast. So what I'd like to invite us to do is to uh, explore opening and closing the jaw. Just one part of the face. The face has a lot of muscles. It's pretty complex. So we're not going to be able to explore it thoroughly today, but we'll, we'll start. So what, I, what, what, I'll, what I'm inviting us to do now, and I'll do it with you, is just to remain as still and upright as possible while opening and closing the jaw. So let's just do that together. I'd like to invite you to keep doing that. Obviously, I can't talk and do that very well at the same time. So I'm going to provide a little bit of intermittent guidance. I'd, I'd like to invite you to keep exploring opening and closing the mouth as I do that. Uh, remember, never hurt yourself if it's uncomfortable, if it feels scary. Do less, even to the point of not doing. So you'll notice if you're sitting upright that the jaw actually can open by gravity. And what I mean by that is that no effort is required. We don't have to pull the jaw down. All we have to do is release. Gravity takes care of opening the jaw. All we have to do is release. So when I'm exploring this, I want, I'm very curious about noticing, am I pulling the mouth open? Am I pulling the jaw open? Or am I just allowing it to be opened by gravity? So that's, for me, that's the, that's a very important inquiry. So I allow the jaw to be opened by gravity and then I close the jaw. Now to close the jaw requires that I draw it up. It's like a, like a, like a draw bit, drawbridge of a, of a castle. Okay, I'm drawing it closed. So, so it's being pulled up from, a, from, from above, 
to close. It's releasing down. Now also, as we explore this, might we might become aware that when the jaw opens, it actually is moving in two ways. You might become aware of this. You might become aware, not only is it moving down, the jaw moves down, it also moves outward, forward, slightly. It's like a, a hinge and it hinges both down and forward slightly. So you might become aware of that. Now, another thing that you can do that I, I find to be very, very powerful, and this is a general recommendation, but we'll apply it to this specific movement. So open the jaw as far open as is comfortable. So just release the jaw open and then just allow it to remain open for a moment. And be curious as you allow it to remain open about the sensations that you experience here. So you, you almost surely will experience sensations and you can notice that your brain has conditioned reactions to these sensations. It has opinions and judgments about these sensations. It has an image about what these sensations mean. Can, maybe you can see that. You can see that your, your brain provides you with a somatic mapping that tells you what your face and body is doing and what that means. And is it good or bad or safe or unsafe? And you might notice that it has judgments about some of these sensations that say these sensations are unsafe, uncomfortable, and that they're incorrect. And it wants to correct, it wants you to correct the sensations. Now, if you notice that, then just be open to the possibility that you don't know, that maybe your brain is wrong. Maybe your brain has the wrong mapping, the wrong image the wrong idea. Of course, you're not straining because if you were straining, you would be possibly putting yourself at risk of injury. So it's important. Don't strain. Just allow the jaw just to be comfortably, even if it's not yet comfortable, <laughs> but just to be open, not straining to open, not doing anything dangerous not trying to open it as big as you can, just allowing it to be naturally, effortlessly open. And then see if you can maintain that same openness, the same openness of sensation, the same release as you slowly close the jaw. I find this to be really powerful. So we keep it open, allow it to release soften, allow the brain to adjust to this new possibility that maybe this is better, maybe this is correct, maybe I don't know what the sensation means. And then to allow for that same openness and release as we close slowly. And try that a few times, I'll do it with you. Well, I, I could keep doing that for a long time. 
but I, I think we're, we're past the 30 minute mark. So we'll wrap up today's uh, practical portion of the meeting and I'll end the recording momentarily. For those of you who are here live, we'll uh, stay on for some Q&A and sharing, but uh, I'll just want to say bye to anybody who's watching the recording of this on YouTube or on my website. So thank you for joining me and uh, I'll see you next time. We'll end the recording now.